Hey, what's up everyone? James from Junkyard Fox. Thank you so much for joining me on this very windy afternoon. Sadly, folks, we've just slowed down in filming because it's just been very windy for the last month. It's going to be windy for the next month, so there's no going around it. Hopefully, it doesn't mess with audio too much. Anyway, moving on from that, we are in late April, meaning we are officially in spring. It's nice and warm down here in Texas, so we're overdue for a spring 2022. EDC update. So we got some stuff you've seen before, some new gear that we're currently testing out, and a little bit of a preview of upcoming reviews. So thank you for joining me. Let's get started. Okay, so as always, we start from head down to your feet. So let's go ahead and talk about my hat. Now this is a old hat. This is probably my first wide brim hat I've ever owned. I got this back in like 2018, if I recall correctly. Now you've seen me with several hats at this point, but once again, this is my first one. It's some rinky dink hat I got from like a, a Whole Foods, if I recall correctly. Um, now for, I used this for the first year and then from there I kind of retired it around 2019 when I moved on to my cotton, my brown cotton hat. Um, so this one didn't see a lot of action, but because it's of a straw hat, and as you can tell, there's a lot of little holes for ventilation for the summer months. I decided to bring this one back. Um, also, I decided to modify it. So this band right here, this leather band, was a gift from Cuervo. And then I also added a crab claw right here. So a little customization. Uh, recently, I did a road trip all the way up to Oregon, and then I fished for some crabs. Uh, check out that video if you haven't yet. We cooked these bad boys right beside the sea, and I decided to bring a little trophy. I'm very much inspired by the Predator movies, the first two good ones um, as a kid. So I've always liked, you know, on a worthy hunt, take, you know, take a trophy. Um, and I did preserve it, by the way. I, I covered it in salt, you know, on my way back over here. And then once I got here, I cleaned it and I used a mixture between uh, some sealant, some clear sealant, as well as some clear uh, nail polish. So don't worry, it's not going to be stinking up the house or anything like that. But I really like it. It's very unique and different. And I'm really liking this hat. So let's move on down to my neck bandana. Now this got really popular with me doing this around the height of COVID. Of course, you couldn't enter a, a, bu a business like a grocery store without covering your mouth. So this became very convenient. Of course, we all know that a bandana has a hundred uses, so it makes sense to carry one on you anyway. In fact, I tend to carry two. Now the one on my neck, this one I did buy recently when I went on vacation in Portland, Oregon. I bought it at some Asian, little Asian store. Um, it is 100% cotton, but it is a thinner type of cotton, so it's more breathable. So it's more convenient, once again, to using it to cover your mouth, uh, as opposed to the one that I carry uh, in my jeans pocket that, you know, it's a thicker one that I use to move pots and pans. So um, once again, very useful for entering establishments, that kind of stuff. Uh, plus it looks cool. Once again, the neck bandana with the with the wide brim hat is very evocative of the old Wild West and, you know, very Southwestern. So cool stuff. Moving on down here, I have a notepad and a pen. You guys know I always carry this stuff to write ideas, sketch, anything like that. I always have that on me. I use this damn near every day i think i use this more than like my knives and stuff just because i'm always writing down or writing ob objectives and to-do lists and that kind of stuff so i always suggest if you're a creative type of person to carry a notepad and a pen uh rinky dink dollar store notepad and a little sharpie pen and uh that's about it on me other than that i got my timex watch simplistic yet elegant this is as fancy as i get i don't like anything too bling so you know a little bit of olive drab the nylon, good stuff. Now moving down to my belt and my pockets. So right here, always have my keys on me, right on the belt loop. And I don't like very clunky keys. I don't like them to be too cumbersome, so I keep them very stripped down. Now I do have this titanium carabiner by the company Rovivon. That's the company that makes the little flashlights that I tend to use on my hat, on my cotton and wool hats. Uh, really great, I've been using this for over a year. Really like it. Now the cool thing about this carabiner is that it usually comes with a little blade. Now the blade is missing here. I did it, it did go dull, so I tried to remove it and I broke it off. So I I gotta pry it off. But other than that, that little blade, it's like a little scalpel, and it's really useful for when you don't want to dirty your blade or whatever the case may be. It's really useful for me when I'm shipping things out at the post office, and I don't want to get tape all over you know the gunk all over my blade. So it was really useful for that little centimeter measurements right there a Mandalorian Lego 
uh, well, a Mandalorian Lego figure. Uh, this was a gift from my brother, Joe. And then I have this talisman. This was made by Corvo Negro. And uh, we hunted a rattlesnake a few years back, and he kept the shells when we killed it. And then he, you know, he made this talisman for me. as something like a little good luck hunting charm. It is missing a couple of the beads at this point. They've broken off. But overall, other than that, you know, it's still holding on. So I like to think it brings me good luck when it comes to hunting. And that's about it. Oh, a can opener as well, just in case. And that's about it for my keys. Once again, I don't like cumbersome keys with 20 different things on them. Other than that, moving on to the pockets, uh, I'm testing out this flashlight right now by Thrunite. This is the Thrunite Archer Mini, a very simplistic light. It really only has three different modes, but very simple to use, very budget friendly. It runs you about 25 bucks if I remember correctly. And uh, yeah, really cool. I don't have a lot of experience with it so far. I still gotta test it for the review, but so far so good. And that's about it. I normally have a lighter in this pocket. I recently lost it like a damn fool. So I got to replace that. And that's it of the pockets. Back here, my butt pocket, I do have my leather wallet. This was made by a friend of mine, James Howard. He goes by 610 with his leather work. And I'm loving this wallet. I've had it over a year. And I just love the personality it has, the simplicity. So yeah, nice and simple. Love it. So, James Howard, thank you so much, buddy. I'm still rocking it. All right, so let's move on to my other side. Moving on to my other butt pocket. Here I have my secondary bandana. And where the bandana around my neck, I tend to keep cleaner and a lighter bandana because it's obviously it's on my face. So this is the one that's going to be the, the workhorse. This is the one that I'm going to be moving hot pots and pans from the fire, wiping my face from sweat, stuff like that. And this one is really cool check it out this is a one of our brand new merch designs and i apologize for this damn wind but uh this is a cuervo negro bandana so check it out 100 percent cotton this is embroidered on there so just keep that in mind but uh check it out one of our designs with the cuervo negro you can see cuervo right there walking through a doorway and uh, if you're so inclined to purchase one of these um i'll have the link down below where you can visit our merch store or if you would like to buy, you know, a t-shirt with this logo or something like that, this design. So go ahead and check that out. Okay, putting this away. Now let's go ahead and move on to my belt knife. So I've been using several knives, but let's be honest, to no one's surprise, this is the one that I use the most often. This is the Junkyard Fox Snake Eater Knife made by Wood Steel Knives by my friend Woody Smith. So for those of you who don't know, this is my personal knife design, once again made by the very talented Woody Smith. And this is just the knife to end all knives, in my opinion, for me personally. I can't say it's good, you know, it's the greatest knife, or the, if you got yours, you know, if you got one for yourself, that it's gonna beat all of the rest that you own. But for me personally, this thing is just damn near unbeatable. Um, I have a review on it if you're interested in checking it out i'll have the link up here but i have done everything from skinning board to whittling a spatula with this thing uh it's designed to be great for many things so the scandy grind portion right here is going to be great for whittling or feather sticking that kind of stuff or then it tapers off to this thin flat grind 330 seconds inch thin blade well, like i said it's going to be great for either skinning game like i skinned a boar with this at one point you know i've skinned several you know I've, I've gutted fish and all that stuff i've gutted a rattlesnake love this blade you'll see a couple of other ones in a little bit but yeah let's to be honest this is the one that i'm carrying about five days out of the week And then moving on from there, just a simple chapstick in my pocket. You, you don't want to look like a crackhead with chapped and dry lips. So, yeah, especially because we live in a very dry environment. So, very useful. And that's about it for what I'm rocking on my person. Also, I always have a water container. Anytime I leave the house, I'm taking a water container. Hell, half the time I'm at my house, I'm still drinking from my water container. Uh, this is a Rothko, I'm sorry, a Nalgene bottle. Uh, this was a gift from Malcolm from the Hidden Woodsman like four years ago and still gets plenty of use. So easy way to stay hydrated without being so wasteful with water bottles or being a chump and paying $2 at the gas station for a water bottle. Always got my water with me. 
Okay, so now let's go ahead and talk about my haversack. Now I carry a haversack every single day, come rain, come shine. Even if I'm just gonna be running some errands in town or I'm gonna go work at my day job, I bring this with me. Now, 90% of the time, to be honest, a lot of the stuff stays the same. The, the typical basic necessities of life, a flashlight, a container, a poncho, utensil, that kind of stuff, phone charger. But then again, you know, depending on the situation, some stuff will, you know, fluctuate. So. This bag is brought to you by Tough Possum Gear, as you can tell right here. Now, this is the Shackleton EDC Haversack, the satchel. I, I, actually, they call it a satchel, but, you know, it's a haversack. So, you know what it is. It's over-your-shoulder kind of bag, a messenger type of bag, and uh, it's made in America. It's made out of 1,500D Cordura, so it's going to be very resistant against the weather and the elements. It has this Cobra buckle, which is very unique that I've seen from... A tough possum, nice and quiet, very easy to maneuver. Once again, I do have a review on this if you want to check it out. I've been using it for six months. I'll have the link up here. And then there's there's two pockets on the side. So there's a pocket right here and a pocket over here. So let's go ahead and just start over here. Here I have my saw, Baco Laplander. I've had this since I first started, I want to say back in like 2016. Uh, still working great, I'm not going to lie, it's still working really great, it's still very comfortable, very handy, very trusty. I'm not going to lie, I am eyeing some new saws, so I may be trying out some new saws pretty soon, probably like a Selkie Boy, uh, a Selkie saw, you know, like one of those Pocket Boys, they look pretty cool. But overall, this is still doing its job, but I always have a saw on here. Over here on this side, I do have a brand new flashlight, now this is the Phoenix TK20R version two. I just literally got this yesterday, so I don't have a lot of experience with it. Now, I do gotta say though, from what I've tested, I'm very impressed by what they've done. I really like Phoenix, Phoenix flashlights, so I'm expecting to like this one very much. And once again, because I'm testing it, I'm gonna have it on my haversack. I don't need this chunk of thing, you know, on my person. You know, I can get by with an everyday carry light, but this as a backup one in my haversack, of course, it's going to be a welcome addition. So there we go. Place this in here. Review coming soon. Now let's open this up. Now there's this buckle right here. Let's open this up and let's go ahead and talk about knives. So here are some other knives I've been testing. Now this one right here, longtime Fox viewers know what this is the mini snake eater a beauty of a blade so i just talked about my regular snake eater full-size snake eater just a few minutes ago right here and my god is this thing a great little workhorse i mean the handle itself is not too small where it's going to be uncomfortable and it's really beautiful and of course it still has that multi-grind 332 inch thin blade still has a pommel I mean, this thing is just great. And check out the logo, the Wood Steel Knives Woodpecker logo right there. Junkyard Fox logo right there. AEBL stainless steel, 90 degree spine. Great little blade. So I'll have a review pretty soon on this. You've seen it many times from processing some bluegill and trout to making dinner. So a great blade. Moving on from there, let's go ahead and talk about my other belt knife that I've been using. So I've been using this knife since about November, to be honest, and I'm pretty much ready to review it. This is the Becker BK62 Horace Kephart, basically a replica. Um, so once again, it's the closest we've come to a complete replica of Horace Kephart's original blade. Really beautiful. The only difference is this one does have micarta scales as opposed to the original wooden ones. But, um, yeah, this was sent by a viewer, Sam Herrera. Sam, thank you so much, and thank you for being so patient. Pretty soon, I can guarantee you, this is going to be the next um, knife review in Junkyard Fox. Really nice leather sheath, too. Some Altoids, because you don't want your breath to stink, especially me, because I'm always drinking coffee. All right, and then we have... Here we have a small poncho slash uh, tarp from One Tigress. Now, I do got to admit, guys, this thing is very outdated at this point. You know, it better to have something than nothing. 
But honestly, I'm at the point where I'm just at the, you know, I just want to find a different type of punch or that's just easier to maneuver, easier to use kind of thing. Uh, tarp, I mean, just because this tarp is just so narrow. It's it's too rectangular where it, it, it limits your the ways you can set up a shelter, in my opinion. So if you guys have any suggestions on a very lightweight one person tarp, comment down below. Chime on down because I'm ready to not necessarily retire this, but replace it, at least for my everyday carry. Now, how am I going to put up that tarp? Well, I do have a hank of paracord. And this is about like 15 feet. Not too much, but enough to get something to set up a little shelter. Now, earlier, earlier uh, we had planned to go fishing this week. Last minute changes in weather just didn't allow us to do so. So I do have this fishing kit. This was sent to my sent by my friend billy elliott he is a junkyard fox patron this is made by fox light gear you can sell the little boba fett lego right there uh so thank you billy thank you so much now he originally sent it with other stuff but what i added in here is a lot of fishing stuff so a lot of hooks and a reel swivels that kind of stuff so you know if i have to go very bare bones to do some fishing on a stream to catch some some small trout or some small uh bluegill this is going to work just fine and of course once again i'm going very bare bones when it comes to fishing so i did have this hobo reel right here moving on from there we do have my container i always have a rothko uh, container you know it's just going to be compatible for my water container uh and of course if i have to make you know boil some water make some coffee some ramen something like that i'm going to always have a container on me i do have the manual for the archer mini that i'm currently testing so i can get to know the specs hand sanitizer of course especially after you you know you're fit uh, you're you're skinning some fish or whatever and your hands are all gross kind of thing then a charging block so container cover down here i do have a phone charger well it's it's an electronic charger so it's going to charge your phone your lanterns your flashlights that kind of thing now this is a night court energy brick nb 10,000. i do have a review so i'll have it up here if you want to check it out i do got to say i've been using this for almost two years and it's still going strong even though i've dropped it many times you can tell i you know it has a little patch job here with some tape it's still charging my stuff you know it's still my go-to charger uh and I will say, you know, I don't work with a Nightcore anymore. I do got to say we ended up on bad terms. I just got really annoyed last time um, behind the scenes. But I still stand behind this charger. It's really great. Very light, very thin. Really like it. So the Nightcore Energy Brick NB10000. And then, of course, you need to connect it. So I do have this little Hydra cable that came with a with the Through Night Lantern, TS1 Lantern, I believe it's called. And of course, it has a phone charger for your iPhone, a USB-C, and a micro USB. So I really like that. And let's bring that out. It came with this. Once again, this also has a review. I want to really love it, but there's just some things about it that just, uh, it fails in my opinion. So I'm very harshly critical, a little too much in that video, but I do got to say, I do use this pretty often. So... Just to be fair, I gotta say that it still works great. Just I am waiting for them to, you know, make a version two, kind of thing, you know. So once again, if I did, if I was stranded out here in the middle of the night, you know, and I had, I did have to spend the night. I do have cordage and a tarp to make a shelter, and I do have a way to hang a little light so I have illumination. And then of course, if I did need to, you know, take this apart, if I did need to charge this uh i'm sorry use this to charge my phone or something like that it does double as a portable charger so i really do like that once again not perfect waiting for version two but so far it'll do the job now looking at this pocket over here i do have a leatherman multi-tool now i don't carry a leatherman every day I, i'm gonna be honest i don't i find them very heavy very cumbersome i don't need to use them every day the reason why i brought this one and this is the leatherman charge it's no longer made the reason why i brought this one was because once again i was planning to go fishing so the pliers really helped to remove the hook from the mouth of the fish but you guys know 
a Leatherman is very handy. It's a very handy multi-tool. You've got a knife, a saw, bottle opener, can, op can opener, all that good stuff. This is a an outdated model. They don't make this one anymore, so I'm not going to bother making a review, but you guys know Leatherman. Now let's go ahead and talk about the wall of the haversack. So as you can tell back here, there's room to make like a molly placement kind of thing. Like if you want to add pouches and that kind of thing. Um, honestly, you can use them just as is. So check it out right here. I have a ferro rod. Large six inch ferro rod goes right through. Holds on just fine. This was a gift from Ernie from Paleo Hiker MD uh, YouTube channel. Big shout out to my buddy. Thank you so much. He sent this to me as a Christmas present like two years ago. I'm still using it to this day. Now this is an Exotac fire sleeve right here. Of course you open that up and you have a big lighter. And of course I'm gonna have a very easy lazy man's way of making fire, but I always have it attached to my haversack on a carabiner right here. So the Exotac fire sleeve, it's another American company. I do have a review on this as well. So I'll have it up here if you wanna check it out. Really great stuff, very affordable. And once again, not only is your Bic lighter already a very trusty form of making ignition, making fire, but adding this to it, it makes it waterproof. It makes it buoyant. It's gonna be floating up to the top. And of course, it makes it very visible with the bright orange as well. So really like this. Now moving on over here, I do have this glow in the dark 3D printed lantern. This was a gift from a friend of mine, Father Nomad on Instagram. And uh, check him out. Once again, I'll have the link down below. Uh, it's a, once again, a glow in the dark item. So let this, you know, soak up some light and then place it in here. And in the, you know, in darkness, it's going to just illuminate this. I'm, you know, it's not a flashlight, but glow in the dark. It's going to work very well. And I really like it. So thank you so much, brother. I'm really liking it. It's really, it's a really cool, neat addition as well. And then, of course, I do have my uh, spoon and fork. So uh, whether I'm at my day job and I did, I took like a cup of ramen or something like that, and I do need to, you know, I don't have a utensil on me. I always have one with me. Or even if I'm camping, you know, sometimes I'm too lazy to kind of you know whittle forks or whittle a spoon or something like that so this works just fine this is the yuko titanium spoon and fork you'll see a review on this pretty soon <sighs> Well, folks, that is about it for us. They're about to close the park, so we got to start skedaddling out of here. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I have the links below if you want to purchase any of these items. A lot of these already have reviews onto themselves, so check out those reviews. You want to find out more information on a particular flashlight or lantern or knife whatever the case may be. And that's about it once again. So if you enjoyed it, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions, comments, criticism, suggestions, whatever the case may be. And that is about it for us. We are out of here. I'm like tripping on my words right now. <laughs> so anyways, we'll see you guys next week with another video. Now go outside and get your boots dirty. <laughs>